Now, another concept which is useful in mathematics is comparisons. What's bigger than what? Well, we know that a penny is less than a nickel, is less than a quarter. And you see that there's that little symbol with an arrow pointing to the left. That actually is a symbol for less than. We'll cover that in just a couple of minutes. But we also talk about an equal sign. Now that's a very important thing because you can think of a balance and that equal sign in mathematics is equivalent to the balance. And when you see that in math, you are making a very, very strong assertion that things on one side of that equal sign are exactly similar to things on the other side of the equal sign. They're effectively identical. And by making that assertion, you can do some very powerful things if you keep that in mind, that you have an equation. You see that the word equation has EQU at its root. So we can have 12 is equal to 12, something that seems very simple. But for example, we could have z equal to 12, so we finally solved something for z the unknown, and we assert that it must be identical to 12. And this is from algebra. We can also talk about inequalities. Now, inequalities are things that are not equal. So there's a man balanced on a pivot point of a ladder, and you see you have 6 on one side, 12 on the other. Well, we say that this is a condition of less than, and you see that little symbol that appeared on the bottom of the screen with the point to the left, or the small side to the left, the big side to the right. So we say 6 is less than 12. We hope you all knew that. And we write it like this, where the 6 is on the smaller side of the symbol, the 12 is on the bigger side of the symbol. Let's look at another one. Here we have 23 and 15. Well, we know that 23 is greater than 15, and we write it this way, where you see now the big side of that arrow symbol faces the larger of the mathematical quantities. Or we read this as 23 is greater than 15. Let's try a quick quiz. Follow along with me on this. You decide whether these statements are mathematically true or false. I'll hesitate a little bit before indicating what the answer is. 23 equals 24. Right, there's a rough one. Obviously false. The mathematical assertion is not correct. 1,243 is greater than 1,235. Yeah, that's true. 120 is less than 12. False. And 15 equals 15. It's pretty straightforward. It's true. What about these? 1,234,567,890 is greater than 1,234,000. 547,890. That's true, because we finally see that in the thousands we have 567,000 on the left and 547,000 on the right. What about the next one? 7,203,124,000. Is greater than 7,203,124,908. True or false? False. Obviously, they're equal. How about 5,678 is greater than 5,658? Gave you an easy one. That's true. Okay. We're going to now change topic a little bit and talk about rounding numbers off. Let me explain what I mean by going over to the table here and showing you some things. First of all, often we have things which are kind of an odd size, and they're hard to do math in your head with. So sometimes you might have something that's 8 inches long and it would be easier and you could get a pretty good idea what's going on by rounding it up from 8 inches to 10 inches. 
On the other hand, there's sometimes you can do the math a little bit easier with something if you make it just a little bit smaller. So instead of having eight, uh, 21 inches, we can round this off down to 20 inches and be able to do the math a little bit easier and still get a pretty good idea. You never know I was in Boy Scouts from that. Anyway, let's look at how we do it. So, sometimes we need to do a quick calculation where the answer isn't important. And what we can do is round things off. And here's how we do it. We have 463 feet and how can we fix that so we can do math with it a little bit easier? Well, I can get rid of the three. I can round off to just 460 feet to the nearest 10. Or, to make my math even easier, maybe I can round that up a little bit to the nearest 100 or 500 feet. So the question is, how, what's the procedure for going about this? Here's another example. Suppose I have a temperature, and the temperature outside actually is 113 degrees, but I need to tell someone about it or round off a little bit. Well, since 113 is closer to 110 than to 120, let's just round that off to 110. So if I wanted to tell you to the nearest um, 10 degrees, I would say the temperature outside is 110 degrees. So what we'd like to do is look at the rules for rounding off numbers to a given place. So here's the rules. One, you have to count from the right to the place indicated. Then you put a marker, a finger or a pencil or just your brain probably there. So for example, Let's try to round off 48,936,482 to the nearest 10,000. So we put a marker there. In this case, I put my foot. And then I look to see what's to the right of that. And to, to round that off, since I see to the right of that, I have a 6, which is greater than halfway. I round that off to the next higher one. And I fill in with zeros. So here's, here's what happens. So I put my marker at the 10,000. And I see that to the right of it, I have greater than a 5. I have 6,482. So I change that to a 4 and fill in the rest with zeros. Now, suppose the number to the right of whatever one you've pointed at or marked off is less than 5. Then we keep the marked number and we fill in to the right with zeros. In other words, in this case, if it's less than 5, we don't add a 1 to it. So here's another example. Again, we're rounding to the 10,000's place, but now you notice to the right of that 3, we have 2,482, so now we just keep the 3 and fill in to the right with zeros. Let's look at some other cases. Let's round this off to the nearest 10. So the first thing we do is put a marker on the 10. Then we look to see whether the number to the right of that marker is greater than or less than 5. So in this case, it's a 2, and so then I keep the number 8 and put a 0 to the right of it. Let's look at another one. Let's round off to the nearest 100. So in this case, we put the marker on the 100. Then we look at what's to the right of it. So it's 5 or greater to the right of that 400. And so now we increase the 4 to a 5 and put zeros to the right of it. Let's look at another one. Let's round to the nearest thousand. So what do we do? Try to stay ahead of me here. I put the marker on the thousand, then I look to the right of that, and I see that I have 482. 
Now my rule says if it's five or greater over to the right, I round up. Here I have 482, so I need to basically round down in this case. So I keep the six and I fill in to the right of that with zeros. How about rounding to the nearest 10,000? So in this case, I put a marker on the three and again I look to the right. Immediately to the right I see the 6,482. So now six is greater than five, so in this case I round up and so to the nearest 10,000 I have 48,940,000 for this number. Let's go to the nearest million. So I put a marker on the million and I look to the right. I see that 936,482 is greater than halfway, so in this case I round up. Now remember what you do, since the number to the right is greater than 5, you increase that 8 to a 9 and fill in behind it with zeros. So in this case, to the nearest million I have 49 million.